In this video, we'll talk about the component space representation of the dot product with respect to a Cartesian basis. And of course, it's this expression right here, but let me set up what's going on. We have two vectors, V and W. Each one is decomposed with respect to a Cartesian basis. And the components of the first vector are alpha 1 and alpha 2, organized into an R2 vector named alpha. And the vector W has components beta 1 and beta 2, also organized into this R2 vector. We'll in a moment think of it as a 2 by 1 matrix. And we call this one beta. Then the dot product of V and W, of V and W, which is defined as the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of the angle between them in the component space with respect to a Cartesian basis has this expression, alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2. And it's pretty clear what would happen in three dimensions. We would have an additional term, alpha 3, beta 3. So this is probably the simplest possible expression that it could be. And the simplicity of this expression really sheds some light on why the dot product as we define it geometrically is actually so useful. I think the usefulness of that concept goes hand in hand with the simplicity of this formula. So we'll actually show you two derivations of this formula in another video. In this video, let's concentrate on the important implications of this formula. Well, number one, we've discovered before that it's very useful to capture certain formulas in the language of matrices. So let's do the same here. And it's not easy to say that using alpha and beta, we can capture this expression without making any references to the individual components, simply by writing that this equals alpha transpose beta, which of course would be alpha 1 beta 1 plus alpha 2 beta 2. And equivalently, it can be written as beta transpose times alpha. Okay, two perfectly good matrix language representations of the same uh, formula. And of course, it's this sort of thing that will in a moment, unless it already has, justify the term dot product perspective on that way of multiplying matrices. We are indeed dotting a row with a column according to this formula. You can say it a little bit differently if you want to remember that this has a geometric perspective. We can say that we're really dotting the vectors that this row and this column represent. But we'll get to matrix multiplication in just a moment. Let's talk a little bit more about geometry. Let's talk about angles. So one thing I should have mentioned before is that the dot product offers a perfect test for orthogonality. If two vectors are orthogonal, then their dot product is zero because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And of course it works both ways if you have two non-zero vectors and their dot product is zero, then they are orthogonal. And now that we have this very nice algebra algebraic expression for the dot product, we can really use it for tests of orthogonality. Here's one example. If I have a vector, whatever vector it is, how about three, four? I can now very easily come up with another vector in the plane that's orthogonal to this one. And I want to be a little bit careful here. We're still interplaying algebra and geometry. So when I say you have a vector 3, 4, what I'm talking about is the geometric vector whose components are 3 and 4 with respect to the basis that keys the entire discussion. So if we have a vector whose components are 3 and 4, I can easily come up with components for the vector that would be orthogonal to this one. Here's how I'm going to do it. I think it's the easiest way to do it. I will just put these in the opposite order and put a minus sign in front of one of them so that when you dot the vectors that these represent in the component space, all you have to do is 3 times 4 plus 4 times negative 3. And that, of course, is 0. So you will see this trick often switch the two entries, put a minus sign, sign in front of one of them, and you have a vector orthogonal to the one you started out with. So it's a very nice trick. And of course, it's uh, also a test for orthogonality, even if these were vectors in R3, and then later on, generalization to Rn, 
right? This is completely algebraic, so it really is inviting generalization to higher dimensions, and we'll talk about that later when we talk about unit products. Let's spend a little bit more time on angles, because one of our original goals was to come up with an algebraic expression in terms of the components of the vectors uh, for the angle between them, or for the cosine of the angle between them. In the video in which we introduced the dot product, we of course had this formula, the cosine of the angle between two vectors, and now I'm going to have strictly an expression, an expression strictly in terms of dot products, and it went like this, v dotted with w divided by the square root of v dotted with v, and the square root of w dotted with w. Not at all a surprising formula. We have on, in the denominator, numerator, we have the length of v times the length of w times the cosine of the angle between them. And we're then dividing by the length of v, so length of v goes away, dividing by the length of w, so length of w goes away, so we're left with cosine gamma. And now that we have this algebraic expression for the dot product, we can write that cosine of gamma equals alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2, that of course is v times w, divided by the square root of, excuse me, alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared, and the square root of beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared. So it's bulky, but it's nice because we have just accomplished one of the goals that was set out for us earlier on, which is once again to express the angle or its cosine in terms of the components themselves. And now it presented itself rather easily, whereas I'll bet you that originally when you heard that question, you weren't quite sure how we would do it. But the path through the inner product presents the answer quite easily. Okay, so we've talked about angles. Of course, I also want to point out that this formula is consistent with what we discovered to be the expression for the length squared of a vector, because if you use the same vector v for w, you'll have alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared, so that special case also works. And that, of course, both of these expressions would become alpha transpose alpha. So this expression is consistent with the expression that we have discovered previously for the length squared of a vector. So now let me erase the board, and when I come back, we'll talk about the implications of this expression on matrix multiplication. Yes, we understand now what the dot perspective means, and why it's called the dot perspective. We really are dotting those elements of matrices, but there will actually be a little bit more to say.